So yes, absolutely, Nikki. I agree with this 100%. Like that's the key. That's the cheat code right there. Like understanding the total significance and impact of your decisions and having self-control, being able to govern self. Oh, that's everything when it comes to accountability. That's everything I was missing. That's why I wasn't no accountability at first. Like, I, I still felt some type of way. I still got locked up feeling this though, like, somebody, she made me do that. Like, it was her fault. Like, I didn't have no accountability for self. But I'm telling you, that 10 years being locked up, that decade inside that prison system, like, I ain't like the fact that I was locked up for a decade, but I was thankful that I had conscious, intelligent men around me. I came into contact with wise men and we had like real conversations, you know, and I was able to pull back some of the layers like of my own faults. It's crazy, you know, um, like the, you'll surely find yourself in life where you can solve your problems the best, right? And um, the greatest heights in life have always been achieved by those who've been through the greatest and lowest depths. And so, like, inside those decimal crypts, that's where I did, like, my transformation as a man. The assassination to the man that would go out there and harm somebody. But I, it was a, a thought process that I had to pull back the layers on. Like, when you're talking about, like, understanding uh, the total significance and impact of your decisions. Like, it took me a while to understand, like, that I was responsible and accountable for everything I did. And sometimes... People treated it like CIS, and that's an acronym that I have for seemingly irrelevant decisions. Like decisions that are huge, we play them off like they're irrelevant. And every decision I made that day was relevant. And I didn't think about that though till I was inside my cell. Like when you play back the whole CD of your life, you know, and I didn't like how I was getting down. So, like I said, I had to assassinate that man inside of me. And then when I was in prison, you know, just for that decade, like you see a lot. You see a lot, it's crazy. I'm talking about fights. You seeing, you know, people, death happens. You know, all type of stuff happening inside there. And when I think to myself, like, what am I doing here? It always went back to what you said. Like, I didn't take accountability for the impact of my decisions. And I had no self-control. I had no discipline whatsoever. I had all the training in the world. United States Marine. I play organized sports. Lift the weights. Have my future in front of me. But no self-control. I couldn't regulate my emotions. And so when I had to sit down for that 10 years. Like I came into the understanding and knowledge. Just through conversing with other people. Like yo. The pen is mightier than the sword. I, I believe that now. So let me start thinking. Let me start critically thinking. Right? And it wasn't until I got to that point that I took accountability for myself. So I knew that because I was a problem to the community, I wanted to be part of the solution too. So I was like, what can I do when I go home? So that's what made me come up with Minds Over Nines. Because before, prior to um, going to prison, like when I had a piece of steel in my hand, or for the most part... Most young people that carry nines, weapons, or whatever, like that's the most powerful thing that they ever been in possession of, you know, or, or at least I thought. Right? But then when I sat down, because when you go to jail, right, we got this saying like, all gangsters got to check their guns in at the gate. So now you just in there with that, with these, and this, right? So I just wanted to use this. And then I came to the understanding that, you know, a hot head don't never make a cool decision. This is how I got to where I am now. You know, because I didn't critically think it out and plan it. So if I was once part of the problem, I had to come home and be part of the solution. I used the nine to cause harm. I thought that was the most powerful thing I had. But in actuality, it was my mind, right? Of course. All that time, it was my mind. And so that's why I came up with minds over nines, right? I'm not going to try to talk a society or a world out of using weapons, but because I can't tell you how to defend and protect your house. But before you use it, make sure that the ends justify the means. It's minds over nines. And when I'm in my group session with my guys, one of the, um, one of my, I have Tuesdays. Tuesday is a relationship group session. 
And when I'm telling you, it just be on and popping in there. It just be like real conversation because guys be sharing their real, true, intimate stories. And you can see some of the guys that's deeply locked in and ready to get their family started and are asking questions and are seeking information uh, as, as far as how they should move as a man, what my house should be set up like. And then you see some guys struggling in relationships they were like Mr. D I'ma snap if this is going on again right or hey man we this close we argue every day and I try to process with my guys about what true love looks like I also talk to them about you know the domestic violence cycle so I want them to take a look at those things and I also want them to focus on what that relationship will look like in real time like you don't want it where it's person is right on top of you you don't want so much separation that we're not together it should be like an even mixture of what you got going on in your life and the relationship right and so these are the things that we focus on so yeah I thought it was necessary to put this video up and I'll be sharing more but um, I couldn't be a blessing to other people until I came out and led the way I can't ask my guys to come into group sessions and I'm, I'm open with them all the time but it was time to be open to the world because I could help so many more people. So, for sure, y'all, it was definitely time for me to turn my test into my testimony, turn my pain into my passion. I appreciate everybody on there for the comments. Uh, my ex-wife Nikki, she's good. My son is good. My family is good. My grandchildren. Hey, this is what it's about right here. I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed. And for anybody that's going through something. You feel like, yo, at any moment my relationship can blow up or, hey, they say one more thing or they do one more thing, I'm about to snap out. I just want to remind you about what I just said, right? Like a high head, like never makes a cool decision. So I want you to take time to think about that, right? For sure, for sure. I also know, too, the more we do up here in our head, the less you have to do with your hands, right? So think about how you want to move. Park said it best, right? Every move is a calculated step. The man who can see the farthest on the chessboard is more than likely the person who's going to win, right? So if you can map it out, come up with a plan or a system for how you want to move versus just reacting like I did, you would save yourself a lot of heartache, right? I lost a decade of my life. That's a lot of time that I can't get back. I don't want you to have to go through that same thing. My mom did 30. I did 10. That's enough, right? Alright, I hope this video inspires somebody. You know somebody that's going through something and you think this can uplift them. Share it. Um, comment on it. Tag them in it. You already know what's good. It's your boy D Cook on location. Let's go.